All right, here we go. We're going to do a little video on a transformer. I've done ones before, but this one is going to be specifically on a multi-voltage transformer or a multi-tap, as you might see in the field. So you can see here on this transformer, I've just got a box for a new one that I've uh, pulled out. And uh, if you can read the data plate or, or the sticker on here, this is a 40 volt amp transformer. And you can see that the primary side has multiple high voltage inputs. We've got a 120 volt capability, 208 volt, and also a 240 volt. And no matter which one that I use, I always get a 24 volt output. So let's look at these real quick. I'm going to show you a bad one and what happens. And then I'm going to show you a few things about uh, how to wire these up and some more professional ways that you can install these. So here we go. Now this one is a multi-voltage input transformer, and you can see right here, uh, this came out of a uh, package unit that we have here. Um, I have a 208 or a 240 volt input, and no matter which hot wire I put on here from a 208 power source or a 240, uh, this is going to be my other side of power. They commonly list it as common, uh, but this is not a common as in low voltage common. This is just a common output or return for in some cases a neutral or the L2. Uh, this is your other side of power. No matter which power source that you're using, you're always going to use this one as your return path back to power. And you can see down here at the bottom we got our 24 volt terminals. So two terminals down here on the low voltage side and I have three up top. I'm only going to use two of the three. So if I were using a 240 volt power source, I would use the outer terminal label 240 and my return back to power will be the common. Uh, the 208 would be left uh, uncapped or unused. You can always put, uh, in some cases you can put an insulated terminal over it and that way it keeps it from uh, touching anything uh, such as your finger or your leads or another wire. And the same could be said about if I had a 208 power source. I would use the 208 terminal and then the common to hook up my main power to it. The 240 would be left unused. But you have to watch out for these unused terminals no matter what the voltage is. 120, 208, 240. This still carries power when voltage is applied to the unit. So you have to be careful. I'm going to show you one. Uh, now this one was damaged. Uh, and you can see... These are my two windings on the transformer. This is my high voltage and this is my low voltage. And you can see that the insulation is charred and kind of burnt up. I hope you can see that. Uh, but basically the voltage was applied wrong on this one and this transformer was cooked and it is no longer good. So we had to do a replacement. So we're going to replace it. Likewise, this is a White Rogers multi-voltage transformer. If we look at the front, you can see that it's got your model number, it's got your manufacturer name, White Rogers, and the input can be 120, 208, or 240. The output is always going to be 24 volts with a 40 volt amp rating. And it lists here on the blue and yellow wires, that is my 24 volt side. So as we look at this, these wires over here, my blue and my yellow, that's my 24 volt. And then all these wires over here is going to be my primary side, my input voltage, in order to get that 24 volts out. So as we look, you can see that I've got, I've got orange and red and white and black. And you have to look at the data plate in order to realize or to know what wires you need to use. So if you look right here, at the end of all the input voltage ratings, they're going to tell you that common is black. So no matter what, you're always going to use your return back to power. Uh, common, as they say, is going to be the black wire. So no matter what you use, no matter what voltage you're going to use, the black is always involved. Okay. So if we're going to use a 120 volt power source, I would use the white wire with the black. And that would leave me the red and the orange unused. Uh, and likewise for the 208 and the 240. You would use the appropriate colored wire and then you would have two unused wires for the primary side of that transformer. And 
you can't leave them dangling. You don't want to cut them off. Uh, you want to leave them there. Uh, you may wind up one day repurposing this transformer uh, if you, you know, use any scrap parts or something for personal personal use. Uh, but you you don't tie those together. There's been a couple technicians out in the field. They'll take the unused terminals, and what they'll do is they'll they'll try to put them in a wire nut together. And you don't do that. What you want to do is individually cap each of the wires because even though they're not used, they have voltage on them when power is to the unit. And I'm going to show you that here in just a minute. So uh, that's a bad white Rogers. Uh, like I said, you can look at the, uh, the insulation on these windings. I've got my primary and my secondary. The secondary winding in this one is fine. Uh, the primary was the one that was cooked. Uh, someone probably put 208 on the 120 terminals, which of course is a no-no. You only apply the proper voltage to the proper terminals. So you can, can kind of look in there and see that it's, it's bubbled up and peeled and it flakes off. Um, they, they basically cooked it. So we'll get that one. So, so what I'm going to do uh, is I'm going to show you a brand new one out of the box. Okay, it looks the same underneath as most transformers do. There are two windings, uh, and we've got the iron core in the middle. And of course, as the primary gets the voltage of the system, whatever that may be, then it is going to uh, cause an electrical field. Uh, basically, it's gonna, gonna be a magnet here, and uh, the electrical field around it is going to induce a voltage into the secondary side. Um, so the 24 volts that we have, it doesn't plug into a wall, it gets its power based off of the magnetic field created by the, by the primary side. So 24 volts is here. We're gonna look at these other wires. Uh, I am sitting next to a 120 volt power source, so if I were to look at the data plate on this one, common in this case is always black. And if I'm going to hook it to a 120 volt power source, I'm going to use the white. And that's a common theme throughout the field, but always read the data plate to make sure. Red is going to be 208. So if I had 208 and an air handler, a package unit, what have you, I would use the red and the black. And then 240 is going to be your orange and black, as we see here. No matter what, blue and yellow is always the 24 volt side. They are always uh, by themselves over here. Uh, no extra wires on the secondary side. So. I'm sitting next to a 120 volt power source. I'm gonna wire this up for 120 volts and we're gonna check its output and then we're gonna check the voltage on the other terminals. So hold tight and I'll be right back. Okay, so I've got, uh, I've got my 120 volts wired into the primary side and I'm gonna to try to leave my multimeter here so you can see the voltage that I'm getting as we are going through these little checks. So I'm just gonna, I've got some wire nuts uh, on the high voltage terminals that we're not using or the high voltage wiring that we're not using. And I'm going to use some low voltage alligator clips to go ahead and connect to the secondary side. And you can see over here that I've got 28 volts. So I've got the 120 volt input. And because I have put that voltage on the primary, that is inducing a voltage into the secondary winding. Okay, and you can see that uh, I've got my 24 volts, as we call it, or 28 in this case. So I'm not worried about that voltage. What I want to show you is what is on. Uh, as a matter of fact, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to crimp these terminals with a clear, a clear end here. That way... That way they don't touch anything and give us an electric shock or blow the transformer. So these terminals, uh, and I highly encourage you buy you a terminal kit with these uh, different terminals in them, but uh, this is uh, off, not gonna touch anything. We've got the ends capped, okay? So with this one, what I've got here is I've got the red and the orange wire. Now, according to the manufacturer's information, uh, I'm going to use the red and the black if I have a 208 power source, and I'm going to use the orange and the black if I have a 240 power source. So let's just say that I want to check 
the red wire, even though it's not being used right now, I'm, I'm running 120 volts into the primary side of this winding. But what if I check the red wire right now? If we do that, what you're going to see that in there there we go I'm gonna lay that right there and I'm gonna take my other wire or my other lead I should say and I am gonna put it into this side now look at that that's 211 volts out of 120 volts out of my out of the wall how did I get this voltage it's because we tapped in to a different a different portion of the winding okay and I'll show you that again in just a second um, so that is my 208 terminal let's look at the 240 so I'm gonna and don't do this at home I'm doing this for purposes of, of education but I'm gonna take my orange now orange to black should be a 240 volt input but I'm gonna I'm gonna use it here All right now look at that one 244 volts but all I did was and, and I'm still putting in only 120 volt input on the primary side of this transformer okay it's because all of these wiring taps I'll call it this multi voltage tap it comes off of one one winding really okay let me bring back this other bring back this other transformer if you look at at the way that this multi tap transformer is made and pay attention to it you'll realize that it's much like the three-speed motors that we have out in the field the PSC motors this black wire is always common so we have 120 volts then 208 and then 240 and these individual wires that are not the common they are tapped into different portions of the primary winding uh, it is uh, they're all connected so you can't get away if you put power on one that's why there's power on the other one so what I'm doing right now is I'm only applying 120 volts to the white and the black wires so why did I get 211 on the the 208 the red wire and why did I get 244 on the orange wire that's because these wires are still connected in the winding okay it's it's not you get to pick what you want and the others just go unused and no power they go unused but they still carry that potential uh, and you have to be aware of that okay so that is the reason that when you get a multi-tap transformer or a multi-speed motor that's a PSC what you need to do is take the single wire individually and make sure that you put a connection on the end uh, to isolate it so it doesn't touch the aluminum foil lining on the inside of the air handler it doesn't touch the case and to ground it out uh, because this wire even though it's not being used it still has power on it and some some guys I've seen out in the field they'll take and I'm gonna move these out the way they'll take these unused um, terminal or these unused wires and they'll put one wire nut on both of them. You, you can't do that because now you're getting into a, uh, another bad situation, okay? You do not take two of these wires and connect them together. That will literally melt that insulation and catch it on fire, uh, I've seen. So uh, you, you wanna be careful. Multi-tap transformers, the same as a multi-speed PSC motor, use one wire at a time and the unused go somewhere on like a part terminal or they get dealt with uh, in an individual wire nut or a cap that you have here so you don't want to you don't want to use them you don't want to hook them back up 
because they will uh, cause you some problems and it will not take very long. So you just take a, a little cap like this and you put it on the, the wire that you have and you take your crimpers and you crimp it and do that for your unused. So hopefully that helps. If you have any questions, let me know. Okay, I gotta do one more before we go. So this is gonna be to show you a, uh, a pet peeve of mine, if I can. Uh, I'm gonna take my 120 volt power source, okay? Now, practice what you preach. I'm gonna take this unused 120 volt uh, tap, we'll call it, and I am going to cap it so that it doesn't go anywhere. So I take my little clear cap and I crimp it down you can use a wire nut. There's uh, maybe some electrical tape over the wire nut. Don't just use electrical tape for your connections. That is uh, uh, it's a pet peeve. But uh, I'm going to take this 120 volt. We know that it's going to carry voltage on it when I connect another uh, primary tap. So I'm going to take I'm going to take this 240 tap that we have here. Right. And that's going to be my orange wire. And what I'm going to do is I'm only going to put half the voltage on it okay so I'm going to hook up this 240 tap to my 120 volt power source and guess what's going to happen okay what's going to happen to my output uh, this is a real simple concept I hope it helps you let me put this back in okay so now I've got my plug plugged in. I've got my voltmeter over here. I get my leads back up. And we're gonna go here. And I'm gonna go here. So I'm using my alligator test leads. in order to do this and, and, and show, right? So here you can see that I've got my voltmeter set up and I am putting 120 volts on the primary side of my transformer, but I've tapped it into the 240 volt wiring. So I'm using my orange and the black, which is set up for 240 volts, but I've only put half the voltage in on it. If you put less voltage on the primary of the transformer then you can expect less voltage out of the secondary so in my case i've put half of the 240 uh, on the primary side of the transformer so if i look at my secondary you can see that i'm getting half out it was 28 volts just a minute ago now i'm, I'm when i put half voltage on the primary i get half voltage out the secondary and you can see that I've got 14 volts, okay? Uh, I bring this up because some units out in the field, if you were to go up to them, um, and more specifically, we're, we're gonna talk about uh, the, the package units. If, if you look at this two voltage transformer, right? I'll call it, it's a multi-tap is, is what a lot of technicians in the field will call it. But this is set up for 208 or 240. So this is not going to be in a furnace. It's probably going to be in a package unit. But you have two voltages that are very common in your single phase power sources for rooftop units, 208 and 240. We, we say that we get 24 volts out in the field, but more than likely it's between 27 and 28 on the, the units that you'll go to if the transformer is properly tapped. If you go to a 240 volt power source and this transformer is actually tapped in on the 240 volt primary side of the transformer then you can expect a little bit uh, more than the 24 volts out like I said it's commonly you know 26 27 28 volts but if you were to take 208 volts as your power source and apply that to the 240 terminal and the common you're not going to get 24 volts out you're going to get less than that and it's because you've applied less power to the terminals where 
that 240 voltage uh, needs to be. Uh, opposite of that is true. What if I'm on a 240 system, uh, power system, and I tap this on the 208 in common, uh, you've put in more power than that 208. You put in 240. So you can expect your voltage to be higher than your 24 volt, your nominal voltage that you uh, are going to see out there. You're going to wind up probably 29 or 30 volts. And, you know, that's not good. So make sure when you go out there, to, especially to these rooftop package units, it was always a, a big deal for me because um, I didn't like seeing the 22 volts or the 23 volts. Uh, you'll, get, you'll get low enough voltage sometimes, depending on how close you are to the, the substation, you know, the power station, whatever you want to call it. You could get a little bit of chatter uh, off of your contactors and relays because the voltage is just high enough to engage the coil and cause the switches to move, but you, you may, once it starts to pull that small amount of amp draw, cause these switches to chatter. The coil will energize and de-energize because you're, you're kind of over-amping your secondary side, okay? So make sure that if you put 200, or you're gonna use the 208 and common, you put 208 volts. Don't put 240, put the 208. If your power source is the 240, then you make sure you use 240 and, and common. Don't use the 208, okay? Make sure that you properly supply power to the transformer and when you do that on the input side you'll get what you need on the output side so hopefully that helps if not leave me a message i'll try to make it right this is just my opinion things that i've picked up in the field but uh just trying to make sure good knowledge goes out so that's it